Armenia is hands down one of the most beautiful countries on earth. We feel like we've barely scratched the surface, so today we're going to put that right and we're setting off to two of the most beautiful places in the whole country. We just made our first stop just to have a look at Ararat and appreciate its beauty. Now we're getting back on the bus. As we were driving up here, our guide was like, it's a uh, snake season in Armenia, so be careful where you step. Don't step off the path. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we won't. Our first stop of the day is Dani Pagan Temple, which is actually the only pagan temple left in Armenia because they were all destroyed in the fourth century when Armenia adopted Christianity, apart from this one. What you see now is a restored version of the temple. It was actually destroyed during the earthquake in 1679. So the temple was actually completely restored between 1953 and 1967 by a local architect called Alex Simonyan. Apparently all of the stones that were in the original temple got scattered all over the valley when it was destroyed and all of the, a lot of the locals from the local villages had taken the stones and used them to build their homes over the years not knowing that there was once a temple here and he had to go around all the different villages and ask the locals to take down parts of their home so that he could restore it our guide told us that apparently about 40 percent of the old stone was used to restore this temple unfortunately they couldn't find the rest of them at the time so they used some new stones to restore it back to how it used to look but they've since found quite a few others that they've scattered along the pathway. But because of that, unfortunately, it wasn't accepted as a UNESCO protected site, which is pretty gutting, I think. For... Yeah, because they literally finished restoring it and then afterwards found those rocks. Mm. So ages ago, instead of using cement, they would use those metal pieces to connect the giant rocks together. And these, I think, two original ones, and the rest of them, people taken out to make bullets during the Second World War. So you can see all the holes that's where they were originally. There used to be an old Roman baths right there. Apparently it used to be like a big complex. Obviously for the royal family, normal people wouldn't be allowed to wash there. This is an old mosaic from the 3rd century. So the temple is absolutely stunning and it's surrounded by a cliff on three sides. And as you walk up to it, the view is just incredible. Right, going back to the bus and off to our next stop. Somehow it feels that we parked way closer than that.
So this is Gerhard Monastery Complex, which isn't active anymore, it's just an active church. It was built in the 13th century, and the original name was Anivank, probably got that wrong, which meant cliff, church in a cliff, and it's not an active monastery complex now, but it still is an active church. Armenia is the first country in the world to adopt Christianity but throughout the history Armenia was ruled by others for many years. People didn't necessarily use this as a church. They would come here to feel their culture, speak their language and apparently they were using it as a bazaar. They would come here if anything good or bad happened as well. Apparently it's really easy to carve these rocks and there is a very good explanation for that. This used to be a seabed. So you can see in the rocks up there that there's all different lines and all different colours in the rock itself and that was the ancient seabed as it started to recede down here and form this canyon which is pretty incredible. So there's actually a big problem here at this monastery. In the 70s I think there was an earthquake here and water started spilling through tiny little gaps in the rock in the cliff face and that's now spilling down into the monastery itself and slowly but surely causing it to eat away at the rock inside and there's not really anything that anyone can do because it's in the cliff face itself they can't just take the rocks away and rebuild them or plug the holes this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site now and they're trying all they can to try and fix the problem but at the moment it's not very successful It's just so crazy to think that all of this was under the water. And also they sell the best gata here and we're just gonna purchase it now for our food video. <laughs> I actually wonder if they're fighting for the first place in the queue because as soon as you walk up to them they're all like trying to get you literally so hard and when you buy it with one the rest of them still trying to sell it to you and if you don't buy it they're gonna turn on you I'm sure Babushka number two was swearing at us on the, in Armenian so this is Gata if you want to see what it is let's check out our food video Now we pulled up at our last stop and we're going to be shown how to make a proper Armenian lavash. This masterclass is held actually at someone's house. Это ваш сад, да? Столько всего растёт, такой красивый. Это яблочки просто. Аккуратно. Ага. Так красиво. Стоп. Очень красивый сад. We were told that this particular lavash is made with a starter, so no commercial yeast is added to it, which basically makes it a sourdough lavash. Lavash is baked in a tandoor oven, which you can see underneath right there. It's about one and a half, two meters deep, and it's made out of bricks and clay. The wood is used for kindling, and sometimes, well, some people use also cow poop with it, dried one. So lavash is rolled out quite thinly first, then stretched out even more. Some water is added to the bread so it sticks better and then after you have to slap it to the side of the oven really quickly.
So after lavash is baked, it's super crispy. To make it soft and flexible, you just need to spray some water on it. Let's try it. Looks amazing. It's still warm. Mm. Is it good or is it good? Incredible. Thought so. The cheese is so salty. The lavash is so crispy. And the herbs are so aromatic. It's so nice. Perfect. The job is actually very tough, especially in the summer, because the oven gets super hot. And the ladies are not sitting on their knees. There are some holes for the legs, like they're going into the ground, and it does get super hot there too. Well, as a top master, I decided to show everyone how it's done properly, you know? And um, obviously I dropped it, but not purposely though, just to make everyone laugh. <laughs> So I was saying to myself, be quick, be quick, be quick, but everyone was like, go lower, go lower, and they just slipped and fell, <laughs> fell basically. I'm so upset. I wish I could have another go, but I was so embarrassed that I ruined one lavash. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to ruin another one. <laughs> just uh, don't tell anyone I'm a baker. Just been dropped back in Yerevan. That was a short day, but packed full of flavour. Just like us. And Just like us. thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Are you feeling it? Yeah. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> oh no. What a spaz. <laughs> yeah. Well, you married me. You I know, I know. know. What, what a spaz I am. <laughs> Are you going to say it? <sighs> wipe the lens. I'm going to wipe you. There you go. Thanks. Me.